All right, there's my new painting. Okay, this is a video um, kind of showing you kind of step by step on how I painted this. Um, this is a scene from the uh, Washington State International Kite Festival as represented here by my shirt. Lovely shirt. It's come back in style. Um, I think. Maybe not. I haven't been outside in a while. We're still in, I don't know what month or day or year of quarantine we're in. Uh, it's June, uh, at least when I'm the end of June right now, and we're still in quarantine. So that's uh, actually part of the reason why um, I, I did this painting, because we missed the Seattle, or the Seattle, the Washington State International Kite Festival this year. Um, and it's, it's an event that I, I love. And so uh, to participate in it, I, I looked at some, some photos that I had taken in the past, and I, I uh, decided, hey, let's make a watercolor of um, based off of those photos. And so that's what you have right here. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with it. I think it turned out nice. Not perfect, but it's, um, it's good. And I, I'm happy with it. So um, I'm going to show you guys in this video um, how kind of a step by step on how I did it. It's not, um, it's not going to just be one continuous feed. It's not, um, you're not going to see a lot of just live painting in here. Um, there will be some, but a lot of it's just going to be me kind of explaining what I've just done or what I'm going to do next. Um, I will show some some demos in here too, but uh, for the most part, um, this is kind of explaining what I've done and what I'm going to do. All right. And so hopefully you find it, it helpful and informative. If not, um, this video didn't cost you anything. It's just on YouTube. All right. That's free, except for your time. And I'm sorry if I wasted your time. But um, anyway, a couple things. If you're in my class um, and you're watching this, I didn't use the class materials, that the paints that, um, that I said um, we were going to use for this class because um, I was waiting for my supplies to come uh, and they hadn't come yet. So I just started doing this with what I already had. So um, I didn't use these uh, Van Gogh or Van Gogh painting uh, paints. I used what I had at home already, which was some Daniel Smith paints, some QOR paints. It was just whatever I had in my, on my palette already. Um, I also used a tiny bit of, of, of gouache. Um, and again, I'll talk about this in the video. You can hear my thoughts about it, but um, I use this um, occasionally just to kind of pull out some lights and some, some areas that I've otherwise kind of killed the light in some areas. Um, just full disclosure of what I've used. Oh, also, um, the brushes that I used, pretty much I used three brushes. Uh, pretty much only used two, but I think I might have used this one. It's number six round on occasion. And I used um, this um, Sumi brush, um, which you guys, if you're in my class, again, you, didn't, you probably didn't get one of these, but you could definitely go pick one up. They're pretty inexpensive um, from any kind of craft store or... Um, if you go to the International District or something in Seattle or wherever you're at, um, you can pick these up pretty, pretty inexpensive. You know, they're just like a couple bucks for several of them. But I did most of this painting with, um, with this, like a number two um, round. They're just uh, kind of intermediate quality brushes, nothing too fancy. Um, but we had, I had fun with this painting, so... I think that's it in terms of materials. Um, anything else that kind of pops up, I'm sure it'll be in the video and I'll talk about it then. Uh, so anyway, uh, hope, hopefully you enjoy uh, this video and uh, yeah. So at this point you can see that I'm just sketching things out really light and loose. Um, and what I mean by loose is you don't focus in on a lot of detail. You just try to get the main, just basic shapes here. Um, if you try to get, um, try to draw every little detail, it's, um, you don't allow yourself to paint. So you want to give yourself a little bit of, of freedom. With that said, um, I have found that it is, um, good to be precise in the proportion so if you can kind of lock in like a general kind of like proportion of your your drawings 
you know, and make sure that everything looks right from the beginning. Then you can, um, if you draw it pretty accurately, then you can be a little bit more loose with the paint. Um, I've, you know, I don't draw a lot of details in here because I'm going to do most of this with the paint. Uh, but this is a, just a good kind of guideline uh, to where I'm, um, so I can start dropping in paint here and actually kind of play with it. Um, I know I'm going to get, there's a lot of darks in here, so um, I, I know these like kind of um, pencil sketches, they're, they're going to just kind of disappear in there. Um, I, I don't, didn't erase a lot. I think there's a, a couple points where I erased a tiny bit when I was sketching. Um, I might erase some of these little darks just a, a, a touch more just to, so they're not so dark, so they're not coming in through the, the paint quite as much, but a little bit of graphite. Um, doesn't really matter. You can allow a little little graphite um, to to shine through uh, your translucent uh, and transparent watercolors. Um, oh yeah, and so one more thing before I I'm done with this part. Um, I was just going to kind of point out at this point, um, some people like to put down masking uh, fluid um, in some areas that they want to preserve. I might. Put a couple little spots down in here um, because I know there's some little kind of indication of some flowers and stuff that are kind of in here and it's kind of nice to preserve the white of the paper so if you put like yellow or a pink or something on top of it it really shines it's, it's bright um, I might or I may not do that I, I try not to use masking fluid unless I absolutely have to so I might not do that here uh, there are some areas in here these are like kind of these white tints that are that are in here, um, you you might want to put down some masking fluid. I'm probably just going to avoid them. I'm just going to keep the white of the paper. But um, some people like to put down masking fluid, and that, if you're going to do it, this would be the the stage to do that at. Okay. So I did change my mind. I decided for this demo. It'd be good just to show you um, so what the masking would look like. Um, and then, you know, I also thought, um, you know, I could benefit from it as well. I'm going to be putting like a little bit darker kind of wash um, along this horizon. And it's going to get lighter as it goes up this way. But it's just that dark, these kind of darker kind of gray clouds are going to set off um, some of the, the light, the lights of this tent. I want that contrast. And then, um, so I just kind of dropped in some of these. And then also just to kind of preserve some of the light areas, even though this flag isn't going to be white, um, I'm not sure what color it is, maybe red or something. I want to preserve uh, the white of the paper so that when I go put the red on, it's not just muddled, you know, just not a muddy red. So I can get vibrant colors in there. Uh, likewise, I might just have like a little green band there. But if I don't, um, if I want to try to, re you know, capture some of that idea of like kind of this, this light um, neon green in here. If I just have like a dark gray in here, I'm not going to be able to really do that. Um, so I'm going to preserve the white of the paper in just a few areas. Um, and then I thought, you know, like I said, um, I probably don't need to do this down here, but um, I'm just going to grab some masking fluid and uh, just in a few areas, it doesn't really matter. In So um, you just saw that I just kind of finished up uh, putting on some of the masking fluid on here. And again, you don't have to do this. Um, I just basically kind of did this for the demo. Uh, like I said, I, I do think that some of this will um, will help in the in long run. It's not that it's um, it's going to hurt me. It's just sometimes I, I just choose just to avoid it with my paintbrush. Um, rather than actually putting in the masking fluid, but this will this will actually be helpful. I I, I like that, and like I said, sometimes you, you do want to just preserve some of these things. And if you don't like them, you can always um, you can kind of hide them. They, they get it's just the white of the paper, so um, you can usually hide the white of the paper. It's it's tough to get it back. Some paints um, are a little bit easier to lift than others. Uh, they, some have more staining power than others, but anyway. Um, I've mixed up a kind of concoction of just a bunch of random paints. I just made a nice gray tone here and uh, basically I've taken uh, lots of different kind of colors, but basically like kind of the different blues, like a cobalt, ultramarine, mixed it with some um, 
you know, burnt sienna, raw siennas, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, again, I don't really care too much about color. I just, I'm mostly, mostly interested in tone. Um, and so uh, you guys can play around with, with your colors too. All right, so I'm going to just uh, show you. I'm just going to just go for this. I'll probably end up stopping this video here in a second. But um, here it is. I'm just going to drop this in. You see, you can kind of just paint. Oops, sorry. Holding the camera while I'm painting. I'm not a very good multitasker here. Um, in fact, let's just do this. Going to borrow some of this and bring it up here. Like I said, um, I kind of wanted it darker, kind of along here, and so, like I said, kind of play around in these areas just a little bit. And I'm using just like a, a big, cheap, really cheap Sumi brush. I don't even think this thing costs a dollar, <laughs> um, but. And again, I don't really have to worry too much. You probably saw I just went over it. Like I kind of painted around it. Now I just kind of blur out it in there. Um, this is going to be, it's a its a darker color over the top of it, so I'm not too worried about losing that. Um, but I'll just kind of bring this. I kind of want to I might just take just a touch more. Okay. Well, we got something here. I might just soften that up just a tiny bit. I'll bring some of it down into down into there. Okay. I might just well, I might just put another little touch kind of right in here. But that's that's basically all I needed for a sky. And it's a nice kind of just it's not totally even. I didn't want it hundred percent even. I wanted a little bit darker kind of down here, is kind of blending up. Um, up to the top, it's not maybe a true graded wash, but you can see that uh, that it's it's pretty even. You know, I don't have any of those streaks in there, so easy way to kind of do a very overcast gray sky. All right. So um, I just got done putting this in, and you can see um, I just have a couple little areas right here, and I might just lift them out. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Right now, I just grabbed some toilet paper here, tissues or paper towels, whatever. Just because um, I just wanted to kind of lift some of those out. Um, and so, if your uh, paper, when well, it's wet, you just can kind of dab it, and it'll it'll kind of lift up a little bit. I don't need it. I don't need that's this kind of sky color kind of right in in there. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of lift some of that out. In fact, I'll just lift. It's kind of pooling there. This is risky business, but I just kind of wanted to pull just a touch out of there. It's fine. It, it all it all look good in the end. But um, sometimes if it's pooling up a little bit, you can just kind of just touch it and suck up some of it. Okay, I think that's it's looking good. So as I've been waiting for this sky to dry, um, I decided to go ahead and start with this ground down here and these kind of these hills, uh, these dunes. And um, this is kind of what I was saying earlier about you don't necessarily need to put in the, the masking fluid in here because a lot of the same stuff can be achieved through like dry brush. And so you just kind of let the brush, you can see it. 
that's my brush that I was using. And again, these are just really inexpensive Sumi brushes. And I just go it right across there and the as the um, moisture leaves the brush, it just kind of makes that scratching kind of surface across the, the top and just kind of bumps across the top. Uh, it's pretty, pretty effective. And I kind of went back over it quite a bit. But that's how you can kind of get some of those light areas in there to preserve them without actually having to put masking fluid. But I do have those in there as well, so um, I can... When this is totally dry, I'll, I'll peel those off. Anyway, but I've just basically put in some, um, what, what kind of green here? Oh, uh, sap green, sorry. Sap green and a little Naples yellow. And I'm going to probably drop in just a touch, just a touch of some Indian yellow. It's just such a brighter, just more pigmented yellow. And so just in a couple of these little areas, you know, and again, I'll probably layer um, this a bit more as I'm kind of working on it. But, you know, this just kind of spices it up just a little bit. So. <laughs> um, and you notice um, one thing that I'm doing here uh, is I like to kind of combine kind of wet techniques like wet on wet with that those dry techniques, um, and it just gives it kind of a, a neat, like kind of interesting variety. So uh, anyway, so sometimes if those edges are a little bit too hard like that, and a little bit too abrupt, you can just soften them up. Just grab some water and just kind of see, and then it just blends right in into it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> see that blends right in. Uh, so you can soften them up if if you need to. If those edges are a little bit too hard. You see, I got some little hairs in there. Once it's dry, those things will just come off. So, anyway, just kind of showing you um, when you're doing watercolor painting, um, sometimes you know you have to let it dry um, in certain areas if you don't want it the wet on wet. Um, so I like to kind of jump around. So well, the the sky is up here drying. I just kind of bounce down here and do um, the, on this part of the paper where it's it's wet or excuse me dry, and so then I I kind of bounce back between. Um, around so it just helps me be efficient while I'm painting. You can also use a hair dryer um, which I use sometimes but generally I just like to kind of bounce around and uh, you know just take my time. <laughs> anyway that's it for now. Okay so now um, this is dried. I've just waited. Um, and then I'm just going to basically, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, um, there's the masking fluid right there. See? All that kind of yellowy stuff. It's kind of got a little shine to it. It'll just come, it just peels off. You can use an eraser too if you if you prefer. Um, but you can just usually just kind of touch it. And it comes, comes right off. And that's that's really about it. Um, it's kind of cool. There it goes. See, so you want to preserve like a little highlight in there or wherever. And it's just simple. Well, actually, I, just, I didn't want to do that yet. <laughs> this part. Uh, there we go. Videoing. And I, my brain turns off when I'm... Um, Having to do two things at once. Um, anyway, you guys get the idea. And it all just just comes off, and so I'll finish doing that, and then we will do some more. So at this point, I'm just uh, I kind of got carried away. I just wanted to put that American flag in there. Uh, looks looks pretty good, but maybe it's getting a little bit too detailed. I was trying to fight not getting too detailed. I kind of wanted to keep this one a little bit more loose, but you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. Anyway, um, we'll see. I'll hopefully try to keep some of this loose as it comes in here. Um, but because I got this detailed, I'm probably going to have to bring in a little bit more detail than I um, had originally thought I was going to. I was originally thinking I was just going to keep this fairly loose. But I couldn't. I couldn't resist that temptation, and I, I fell for it. So now, 
uh, this this painting is just going to be a little rendered just a little bit more um, a little more finished than uh, than it would have been otherwise. Anyway, it'll look cool. We just got to go with it. All right. So, as again, we, we kind of, uh, I, I fell into the trap of, of rendering this a little bit too tightly back here. So that just means, yeah, I'm just going to go with it. So I'm, I'm just going to um, probably bring a little bit more um, detail in here than I, I normally would have. So uh, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of building up. You can see these are just brush strokes. I'm just kind of layering. So this is um, there was some kind of wet on wet in here, which you guys saw happen, and some dry brush going in over here. Now it's just basically just kind of like building up layers um, with some brush strokes over here. So you can kind of see this is going to be a darker area in here. So I'm just kind of established putting some of those in here. I'll just kind of show you what that might look like here again. Just grab some on my brush, and let's just see where are we going to go. Somewhere in here, um, and you can just see just kind of like build up some these little areas like that, and you know you can just kind of um, you know, play around and, you know, just however, however you want to, it's just basically kind of mimic what the grass, the, uh, which way it's kind of going or whatever. I'm just making this kind of up is, um, I'm not even using a photo right now. Um, but anyway, check these things out and look, this is going to be like a darker area. And so it's like, kind of just build these these up over time and I know like above there I'm, I'm gonna have like a, a lighter um, so you can see like I can kind of uh, do some lighter things and I might even you know at the at the, the tip of it it's gonna be like maybe more of kind of a golden kind of yellow and so you'll see like little areas like that and so I don't know if that if I caught it on there there we go um, and it's okay for it to kind of blend in and, you know, have little variations in there. Uh, the most important thing is just kind of getting some value changes. Like, so we have like some darks and some lights and just kind of pay attention to the colors. Like where's the darker greens, where's some more of the brighter greens and some of these, the yellows and stuff, the golden yellows that might be on the top. And if you can kind of do those, you know, it doesn't really matter. It'll, it'll look good, especially, you know, as you kind of zoom out from it. Um, so again, I'm going to try to retain a little bit of looseness, um, as much as I can without just um, getting too crazy. But you can see here, all this detail, it's pretty small. You can actually see it like the tooth of the paper now. Uh, these are just little just marks back there. Um, and they don't look like much, and they're not supposed to. So when I get down here, this is where I'm actually going to try to um, do the people a little bit more clearly. And if I do the people well up here, the viewer will extend credit to these all these folk down here. All right? So that's the idea. Do a good job here and then they'll they'll give you credit back here. And all these little blobs of, of paint that aren't really anything, they will look like people in the end, hopefully. That's the goal. All right, so I'm just going to um, gonna carry on and, and do some more layers. And so hopefully you'll see this after I've done a little bit of work. All right. So um, as you can see, I've been developing this. I've been just building up some of these tones and as you get closer you can kind of see it's, it's pretty chaotic um, but really what is you kind of step back from it um, it starts to make a little bit more sense and I'm just kind of again thinking about tones and so if I wanted to get like a darker streak in there I just kind of um, drop in um, like a darker kind of just washes of watercolor in through some of these areas. If I if I notice it's like more, more golden in some area, I'll do that, or more kind of a, a brighter green, I'll, I'll put that in. And then I kind of go back in and put some, um, and I do those washes pretty wet. Um, and then I kind of go back with a little bit drier brush over on top of it um, to help kind of indicate there's like individual kind of grass blades and kind of makes kind of a nice effect overall. I'm still developing it. It'll still change a little bit, um, a little bit more. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you this as it's kind of developing. So this does start to look like that crowd as it's kind of going back there, um, you know, kind of in context now. Um, again, this is kind of what those little um, marks just look like. They're, they're not much. I just kind of look at just kind of colors and I just turn them into little, little shapes. 
um, you know, they're, they're just little blobs, but every once in a while, you know, like there, I'll, I'll kind of like, I don't know if it's going to, no, it's not going to get in focus. Um, you can see like, oh, there it is. Um, that guy, like, can you see, like, I put in, drop in little arms and stuff in there. Um, yeah, so you kind of, kind of see, see, so just kind of drop in some little arms or kind of bring a leg out or, or so just in there, just, just a tiny bit, just little touches like that. And you just do a, that to a couple of them, you know, drop in some little arms, uh, and some of these other little, little areas kind of right in there. And it just starts to make con, it just like makes everything make more sense. Um, I've kind of, um, just a kind of a tip of some other things I've done here. Um, as I'm going this way, uh, I've, um, I have used a bit of white watercolor or gouache, um, just a just a touch, just to kind of bring out some areas. Um, I generally use just watercolor. I don't use gouache um, except for just on occasion. I'll, I'll bring in some white just to kind of go over, like those arms and stuff in there. You can't if you just try to layer just like a. a you you need like that white, uh, opaque paint in there just to layer on top of a dark and I've done that in some of these other areas too just 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 touches I don't want to kill the white of the paper but I I don't see any problem with using a little little gouache to kind of go over the top of it um, if if needed um, again I, I do want to keep this as a watercolor painting not a gouache painting but um, to use a little bit of um, the white watercolor as a little opaque um, you know I I think it's fine you know, there's the purists that will say no, but you know what? I'm just, I'm not really a purist. I'm just here to make, make pictures and have fun. So anyway, so that's where we're at right now. I'm going to, uh, as I, as I come this way, I'm going to, um, try to get more detailed. In fact, these drawings, they were planning to get more detailed anyway. I might end up getting them even more detailed than, than I had originally planned. Uh, just because I've got so much detail in here already. So at this stage, I've pretty much got the foreground. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Um, there's always a temptation to do a little bit more here and there. Um, but I, I feel like that part's done. And I feel pretty, pretty good about the crowd and the tents and the uh, kite festival itself. It's looking pretty good. Um, I think at this point I'm just going to move on and start and just finish up doing the sky. Um, we'll see. I might go back in and make some touches here and there. Um, and I might add a few more, um, uh, kind of, I know there's some more cloud or, um, kites and stuff that were kind of attached on here that were kind of floating around. I might put some more of those in, but basically I'm just going to start putting some in in the sky and then I'll, I'll be done with this. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, it's, it's coming along. All right. So at this point, I'm putting in some of these uh, kites up in the sky, and you can see it's kind of this overcast and windy day, and there's a lot of moisture up in the up in the sky. So it's really going to exaggerate some of this atmospheric perspective. Um, so these these kites are just going to kind of you know, fade in and out of these, these clouds, especially as they get further away, they're going to be less saturated in color. So, um, if you put on a color too strong, all you do is just, um, grab some tissue and then just, just touch it and it will, um, it'll suck up the, the paint and it'll be a little bit lighter. So, um, as long as you just kind of put it on pretty, pretty wet, um, you can do that. And so, um, and again, you know, these are meant to kind of almost disappear into the sky. If I want to bring some closer and kind of exaggerate some of that atmospheric perspective and having some um, closer to me than others, I'll just put them on a little bit, um, the colors a little stronger and, um, that'll, that'll do it. But you can see, I can kind of push some back in these clouds by almost just hinting at them. They're, these edges are just kind of, um, kind of lost. Some of them are, are lost and some of them kind of emerge. And so it's kind of a neat way to, to do this. And they're pretty easy. You know, I'm not, uh, you don't have to be too, too careful. They're just kites. They're just little, little lines up in the sky. Uh, so anyway, just kind of having fun with this. So hopefully I'll just, just finish this up here pretty quickly. 
All right, so um, I think it's finished now. Um, I, I signed it, so uh, I felt pretty good about it. Sometimes I kind of do that impulsively and just I might see some things I want to touch up, but I think this is done. Uh, and so at this point, um, you can see I'm hands-free. I got a little thing to hold my my uh, my phone up so I can record this a little bit better. So hopefully my next vid videos are even better. But I just wanted to show you now um, kind of the revealing process. Isn't this kind of a satisfying uh, part? So just going to remove that tape. Nice clean edges. Looks good. Yeah, this one's done. All right, there it is. So I thought maybe I'd take this off and just show you this, just because sometimes people they need to know these things. Um, if you if this is like one of your first times uh, using a watercolor block. Um, just like an edge, they, they usually have an edge that is not glued down. That would probably be down. This kind of warped a little bit because I was working pretty wet on wet. Um, so it kind of started to come up a little bit already. So, but you'll see like there's just usually a spot. Like this is all kind of sealed down. Like on, on every other edge, it's, it's sealed down on this particular one. And, you know, on this one, uh, these are all... Uh, sealed down except for this one corner which lips flips up uh, so they're all a little different but usually you just got to find like an edge um, and then you just kind of you know, make sure you only grab one sheet of paper and then you just kind of slide it around the, the edge like this that's pretty easy to do Sorry, I don't know if I'm catching all this. We just basically just stick it in there. Just go around underneath it, and it comes off. Got a nice watercolor painting, and we're ready for a new a new project. All right, so stay tuned. We'll do another project. Okay, we'll use this sheet of paper. We'll, we'll get it going. All right, take care, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching this uh, video. I know it was a long one, half hour long video or whatever it turned out to be. Um, but if you like watching me do these um, these drawings, these or drawings and, and paintings, um, whatever my little art project might be for the, the day, um, give me a, a like in there, put comment, um, you can subscribe. Uh, and if I see a lot of interaction, I see that people are really you know, enjoying these videos and uh, and benefiting from them. I'll keep making them. Uh, but if, if people don't really like them or whatever, then I will not make them. I don't need to waste your time or mine <laughs> making silly videos. I'd much rather just be painting and drawing and doing kind of fun things like that. So anyway, thank you so much again. Uh, next time. Take care. Bye.